Hello, my name is Jonathan Biznet, and in this circuit I'm going to show you a push-on, push-off uh, SCR uh, circuit. Uh, basically the button will both turn it on and turn it off. I've used a couple of different uh, uh, components to make this work, and I'll walk through each of them and give you a, an understanding of how it works. And then, in this particular case, my load is nothing more than an LED, but frankly, it could be uh, any number of other things. Uh, so you'll see <clears throat> over here on the left our button. I've got a, a cap and a resistor on it to give it a little bit of uh, help in the debounce process, but to make that work effectively, I've got right in here. I've got an LM311 uh, comparator that's configured as a Schmidt trigger, and I'll show you that in the, in the circuit and how that's working. Uh, and then next to it, I've got a BJT, uh, and the two are uh, connected uh, with a capacitor, in this case uh, a decoupling capacitor. And the output, uh, or the uh, connection from that transistor is into, in this case, uh, a CD4013 uh, dual D type flip flop, uh, which is basically doing the toggling, and then finally the output from that goes into uh, the SCR right in there, and then finally the uh, LED. So, to show you this working, you know, if I press the button, see so it go on, press it go off, on, off, very simple uh, process. If we uh, look at the scope up here, what you'll see actually is I've got uh, one of the probe leads here, uh, the yellow one, coming into, uh, uh, this is the input to the dual D-type flip-flop. So you'll see the, uh, the rise and fall the, that triggers a clock cycle on the flip-flop. And then the other one is hooked into, uh, basically uh, it's hooked into the gate of the SCR, so you'll see the uh, the signal, uh, or you'll see, I should say, the level on the gate of the SCR bounce between uh, positive voltage and more or less ground. So, um, let me show you on the scope what's happening here. When I press the button, you'll see uh, you'll see that spike as it uh, shoots up. Let's see if I get this light out of the way a little bit. You'll see the spike as it shoots up, and then you'll see uh, the blue line here, which you see both the yellow line and the blue line when I when it spikes, the yellow line is the input to the flip flop, and the blue line is the base of the SCR. So you'll see it. The blue line is bouncing between some positive voltage and ground, basically with each click. Uh, so that's what's kind of performing uh, the trick here. Now I should note at this point. The SCR I've used in this case is an MCR 100-6, uh, and what I've done with it, I would not say that every SCR will work exactly this way, uh, because I've configured it in kind of an unusual situation, in that I use uh, the input, or the, the gate of the SCR, to both turn it on and turn it off. Uh, normally, you would uh, have some switch that would uh, break your load connection which would turn the SCR off. Uh, in this case I instead opted to uh, pull that uh, gate to ground and in this particular case with this SCR that works. I won't, as I say, I won't tell you that that will work with every SCR. Uh, you'll have to try that and find out. But uh, let's go ahead and look at the um, the circuit diagram here. So what I have here, starting on the left, you'll see that there's a resistor and a cap, and basically this kind of helps with my debouncing process, because the cap is charged up uh, through the through the resistor through the 15k resistor. And when you press the button, you'll see then that the cap will discharge slowly through the 100k ohm resistor. Uh, and because of that, it can't drop too quickly uh, on the uh, comparator to flip it back. So if, if the switch bounces just a little bit, nothing will happen. Uh, there, the, I shouldn't say nothing will happen, but the, uh, there won't be a sudden uh, bounce 
in the voltage that's significant enough to flip the comparator. Uh, now the comparator, as I say, has been configured as a Schmidt trigger. So what you'll see is I've got uh, 10k ohms uh, in series uh, across the non-inverting input and then I have a 1k ohm resistor from the output of the op amp back to that same point of the non-inverting. So if you consider how an op amp, uh, in this case a comparator works, uh, it's gonna, the output's gonna bounce from the positive rail, in this case 5 volts, to the negative rail uh, at ground. It's gonna bounce back and forth. It should be either one of, one of those two values, generally nothing in between. So as an example, when, uh, when we're first uh, in here, you'll see that that 100K ohm, when the switch isn't depressed, that 100K ohm resistor pulls the inverting input to ground. Uh, so at this point, the non-inverting input would, be, would have the higher voltage on it. So it's going to be halfway between ground and 5 volts. So it's going to be at 2.5 volts initially. Well, let's think about it that way. It's actually going to be at a slightly different voltage. But assume that it's somewhere around 2.5 volts. Either way, it's higher than the non-inverting. I mean, it's higher than the inverting. So that means that positive 5 volts is going out the output. If we look at that 5 volts, we basically have... Uh, 10k ohms and 1k ohm in parallel to 5 volts and then we have 10k ohms to ground. Uh, so we have a voltage divider and if you put 10k in parallel with 1k you're talking about something just slightly less than 1k. Uh, so that's going to mean if I put 5 volts against that it's roughly a tenth of that. So uh, it's roughly a tenth down so basically I would be looking at somewhere around a little over four volts sitting at the non inverting input so what's gonna to have to happen is when that uh, switch is pushed it's going to have to take that thing above four and a half volts or so to cause the the inverting input to change uh, to change the output. So when the inverting input goes high, it's higher than the non-inverting, suddenly we're going to put ground to the output of this comparator. And now the thing switches around and suddenly you have 10k and 1k in parallel going to ground and 10k going to positive 5 volts. Now at this point the non-inverting input is sitting at 0 0.5 volts uh, and waiting, uh, waiting for the thing to, to hit that. So it bounces the, the, um, the trigger point back and forth to each extreme so that a little bit of a variation on the non-inverting input is not enough. It has to significantly rise or significantly fall to change the, op, the, the comparator. So then we take the output off of that comparator through a one microfarad uh, capacitor, in this case a decoupling capacitor. It has to be there. Without it, what you end up with is potentially another 10k ohm resistor off your output going to 5 volts and you end up with a very odd thing and your, I guarantee you your Schmidt trigger will not work properly. So you must have that decoupling capacitor. In this case, uh, one microfarad worked very well. Uh, and that drives the base of a transistor, in this case a 2N3906, and we have 10K ohms from the base going to positive 5 volts. So it's pulling this uh, PNP transistor, it's pulling the base high, so the transistor is basically off uh, until uh, you get a, a uh, negative or a, just about a ground output out of the uh, op amp, which basically, I mean out of the comparator, which as we noted, once I press that switch, and the inverting input goes higher than the non-inverting, the output's going to go to ground, which is going to send an output, is going to take that cap to ground, which is going to show up on the base of the transistor and turn it on. In this case, more or less momentarily. Uh, and that was that yellow spike that you were seeing on the, uh, on the uh, oscilloscope.
So then when that uh, transistor turns on, uh, it basically uh, pulls that, uh, uh, it, it pulls, I'm sorry, it takes the uh, pin 3, the clock of the CD4013, it takes it high. And it is on a positive going uh, uh, signal that that clock increment, uh, that that clock causes the flip-flop to flip. So it's every positive going uh, clock cycle. So taking that transistor momentarily, turning it on, uh, takes that uh, initially, I should say the 22k ohm resistor is pulling that pin low so that when the transistor turns on, that uh, that pin suddenly goes high and then back low. So you get that clock pulse, a very quick pulse, which is all we need. Then you'll see on the, uh, the flip-flop, the 4013, you'll see I have uh, pin 5 tied back to pin 2. So uh, basically the inverted output of the flip-flop is tied back to data. That's what causes this thing to toggle. So each time the clock uh, uh, toggles high to low, it takes uh, the last state, the inverted value of the last state, and uses that as the input. So it basically goes 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 type uh, uh, thing. It's, it's flipping and flopping. Uh, pin 1 is our output. You'll also see 4, 6, and 7 are tied to ground. Uh, this is the set and the reset and the ground itself. We didn't need those. Pin 1 is the output, and that then goes to the base of the SCR. And what happens is when this... Uh, when pin 1 is high, uh, the gate on the SCR will cause it to go on, turn on, which will, at that point, complete the circuit uh, for the LED and it will turn on. Uh, and it'll stay on at that point, regardless of what happens, uh, until we do something else. And in this case, when we take that, we cause the, uh, the flip-flop to toggle back to ground and it takes that gate to ground, it will turn this uh, SCR back off. Again, as I noted, that will not always work with every SCR, but in this particular case with the MCR100-6, that actually does work to turn the uh, SCR back off. So that that's the circuit as a whole, and I will uh, include the uh, diagram as an attachment, uh, or I'll actually put the URL, the link to it, uh, in the uh, description of this video. Uh, I hope you found this interesting. I uh, certainly encourage you to give this a try. And there, as I say, other SCRs may do this as well. So uh, just give the SCR a try and see what happens. Uh, thank you for watching.